Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all the 12th Monarchs out there in Monarch Nation. Welcome back. Here we go, the historic move to uh, FBS football here at Old Dominion University coming into our first game. Uh, I just wish it wasn't East Carolina. Uh, I'm sure most are well aware that we are, uh, I think, a minimum of 22-point underdogs uh, going into this game, but uh, we need to get it started somehow, some way, so we'll we'll go ahead and work towards this challenge of, of playing an excellent football team. Uh, speaking to our team, it's uh, we've come a long way since August 4th. Uh, we definitely have a long, long, long way to go as a football team. Uh, what I've told our team this year is that from the first play of East Carolina uh, to the last play of, of North Carolina on November 23rd, uh, what I want to see is improvement. I want to see improvement out of this football team. It's such an unusual schedule this year. Uh, there's not a bowl game ahead for us. There's not a national championship playoff tournament. So uh, the way I'll gauge the success of the football team this year is that improvement steadily throughout the year. The second thing that I told them is that uh, I would like to see in all 12 games we play this year, there's an opportunity to win the football game going into the fourth quarter, regardless of, of who we're playing, regardless of the opponent that we're playing. Uh, we're, we're planning on taking 70, as of right now, taking 70 players to East Carolina. And some, some interesting numbers for those of you who like to chew on numbers a little bit. Uh, first of all, 34 of these 70 uh, have never played in a college football game. 34 of the 70 have never played a snap of football here at Old Dominion. Uh, 26 of them basically just got here meaning from January 14th when we uh, brought in some mid-year uh, either transfer student athletes or high school student athletes to this summer, uh, 26 that are, that are right now scheduled to be on the bus uh, basically just arrived. The other eight were redshirted off of last year's team. So uh, to say right now with a 70-man with a travel roster, 34 of them uh, being brand new, having never played a snap, uh, to say that we're inexperienced going into this game would, would be an understatement. Uh, this reminds me a lot of 2009 uh, when we first started in terms of uh, having a, an inexperienced football team. That's what we've got going into this game. And uh, I will say about this football team, right now we've got 96 uh, student athletes total on this team. I, I like this football team a lot. Uh, I like what I've seen from these guys from, from August 4th. Uh, when we started practice, you know, right through uh, to this point, it, it's been probably the most challenging preseason uh, we've ever had in terms of the, the start time. They were usually over here at uh, 5 in the morning. They had classes right up through August 15th. And, and on top of that, they're trying to learn each other, trying to learn the system. So uh, this team showed a lot of character through preseason that's going to that's gonna help carry us uh, through this season. They, they show up every day with a great mindset. They show up every day with a mindset to improve uh, as a football team collectively. Uh, these guys take coaching, uh, which is critical. That may seem like a, a very basic fundamental statement, but it doesn't always work that way. You know, you look at a lot of teams, I don't care if it's NFL, college, high school, generally, generally if a team's losing uh, and a coach is no longer there coaching, it's got a lot to do with the fact that there's a disconnect uh, between the staff and the players, and I really feel like there's a good, strong connection right now uh, between the football coaches and the players on this team. I've, I've seen that and, and seen it grow throughout camp. Uh, our guys are curious right now, not unlike you are, not unlike I am, not unlike the coaches. They're really curious, uh, which again reminds me a lot of 2009. What are we going to look like Saturday night? when we take the field. Uh, there's a lot of curiosity right now. The, the players are getting asked by friends, by family members, by uh, media, by folks on campus, how do you think you'll do Saturday night? And uh, you know, there's a big question mark that's out there right now from everybody uh, involved in our program. And that's what I mean. There's so many uh, similarities between the two. Uh, speaking to what we'll need to do Saturday night to have a, a measure of success, first of all, with special teams, you know, we're, we're going to have to find a way uh, to steal some possessions. We're, we're going to have to find a way to somehow gain an advantage. Uh, defensively, you know, going against how, how good East Carolina is offensively, it's, it's really going to come down to the fact that uh, I already know we're going to bend in this game. I know that's going to happen a lot. We just we can't break. 
we can't break in this game. We've got to be able to, to find a way to, to, to get the ball turned over from them, and we've got to be able to find a way to get some stops uh, in the red zone, because I don't have any doubt in my mind based on who they are as a football team, um, particularly offensively. We're talking about a team that averaged uh, over 31 points a game last year and, and has almost everybody back of, of significance on their football team. So uh, we're, we're going to have to be able to do that. And then offensively, uh, we're going to have to, number one, uh, we're going to have to find a way to run the football. We've got to find some measure of success in the run game, and, and then we got to protect the quarterback. You know, we've got to give the quarterback an ability uh, to not only throw the ball, but at times an ability to try to push the ball vertically down the field. Uh, speaking to East Carolina, this is a team that was eight and five last year uh, that went to a bowl game. Now, if you were, uh, if you're somebody who's an established FBS program, you'd look at them and say, "Hey, this is a really good football team." Uh, if you're us, who's an FCS program transitioning up to FBS, and you look at them and you say, from our standpoint, this is a this is a great football team. You know, this is a team that uh, we're going to have to do everything right uh, to be able to stay in the football game and. Our biggest challenge going into this uh, as a program is that we're going to have to grow up really fast in a difficult environment. You know, this this will be the most difficult environment we've ever played in on the road. There's there's nothing really that compares to this environment because even if you look at our road game last year at James Madison, we're we're talking at least twice uh, the attendance. Uh, we're talking about uh, some noise factors that we've really never had to deal with. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to grow up fast in this environment. Um, I spoke with, uh, with Coach McNeil a little bit this morning. He and I have started to develop a relationship since the, the meetings back in, uh, in May. And, and I think he's a great person. I think he's somebody that's, um, I like to think he and I have a lot of similarities and that we're in it for the right reasons. We're in it for the kids and trying to develop the student athletes. And you know, we basically just wished each other a good week of practice and said we see each other before the game, but um, I don't have any doubt in my mind they're well aware of, of who we are. They're well aware of our program. Uh, there's some that have thought maybe uh, Monarch reminded for Dave right out the gate, ladies and gentlemen, first one of the year. Uh, there's some folks that, that thought maybe um, they would look past us, uh, but I, I don't think so at all. And I've got too much respect for Coach McNeil and what he's doing. No, he'll have his football team ready. Um, offensively, everything evolves around there. Uh, their quarterback, Shane Carden, uh, it's easy to look at the stats and see what he did last year. There's a lot of similarities between Shane and, and our quarterback, uh, Taylor Heineke. But I had a chance to spend some time with him at the Conference USA Media Day. Uh, really impressive, really impressive young man. They've got explosive skill position players, a veteran group back there. They've got some really good offensive linemen uh, that are big, they're physical, uh, they're back. So we're, we're still looking for that, that weakness right now. Uh, in their offense. Defensively, uh, I think their top recruit this past year was their, their new defensive coordinator, uh, Rick Smith, a guy who's uh, he's been involved with college football for 40 years, uh, a veteran coach. He was previously at East Carolina uh, back when, when Skip, uh, Skip Holtz was coaching there. Did a nice job. I, I know Ruffin brought him back in to try to get some things done there. So you can draw some similarities between both our programs in that uh, uh, both are under a new regime on defense and, and looking for improvement uh, in that regard. But there's, there's some good players in there. Um, last year it was really evident as I went back and studied them, they were a much better defensive team in the first quarter than they were in the fourth quarter. You know, when you look at the numbers and the amount of points they gave up, they gave up a third more points in that last quarter of the football game than they did early. That speaks to two things. Number one, it speaks to depth. Uh, and number two, it speaks to some injury situations, which not unlike us, there were again, there were parallels uh, there when you when you look at those situations. But I suspect there'll be a much better football team uh, this year. And I, I think overall, and I really don't think I'm overstating this, uh, we're, we're clearly overmatched in this game and in all three phases. And from, from East Carolina to stay in this game, we're going to have to play uh, as close to perfect as we can from, from our standpoint. Uh, but again, you, you never know what happens. You know, we'll roll the ball out at 7.05 and see. And we're, we're excited and looking forward to, to playing this, this game Saturday night. Uh, and I'll take questions. You were talking about 09 and all the comparisons to 09 kind of starting over. 
Right. How do you, with a 30 team, literally having played mm -hmm. at this kind of level, how do you take the deer out of the headlights somehow mm -hmm. you know, in that kind of road environment? Right, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I've got to really do a good job this week of getting them to focus more on us and what we need to do as a team. You know, I've told them from, uh, from the first day we reported to camp that we're going to need to embrace this environment. We're going to need to get down there and, and have fun because we, we really don't have anything to lose. We're, we're clearly uh, massive underdogs in this game, so to get them to embrace the environment, that'll be my challenge this week, and uh, that's something I'll work to, work to accomplish. Not at all. I've been I've been sleeping great. What have I got to lose sleep over? <laughs> I just stand on the sideline. <laughs> Any other questions for Coach? Hey, Bobby. Uh, coaches a lot of times talk about not getting too high or too low and mm -hmm. keeping the same preparation and things like that. But yet, right. you and the and the kids have said a lot of times. In some ways, you look at the. At, this game and the other FBS games is kind of like your bowl game. So right. how do you balance mm -hmm. kind of the, trying to keep an even approach mm -hmm. with focusing on the you know these um, you know kind of the more glamorous games and right. matchups? Yeah, when we when we talked about that earlier day when I presented to them that the five FBS games uh, would be like five bowl games, uh, the number one thing that had to do with was the fact that um, November twenty third it ends for us. You know, that's it. it. It's final. It's over. And um, most of the kids in this program, they, they haven't felt that, you know, because most of our players have been involved in postseason and trying to win a national championship. So I wanted them to have a sense of here's something special. You know, even though we don't have the opportunity to compete for a national championship and this year we're not allowed to, uh, to be in a bowl game, that that would be the excitement level for us. So that's that's really what that had to do with. Um, you know, in terms of the, the other seven games we're playing, um, to me, those are just as important. I'll, I'll make sure I emphasize that with the players uh, because six of them are at home, which is, I mean, that's a treat for all of us. You know, every time I get to run through that tunnel, it's something special. And then we're playing our, our crosstown uh, rival that, that from everything I'm hearing, that game could be 25, 30,000 people also. Uh, so I think there'll be a real measure of excitement, Dave, with the other, with the other seven games. Uh, but the five FBS games, we've never played an FBS team. Uh, we don't have any postseason. Uh, and this first one right out the gate is, is clearly the largest crowd uh, that we've ever played in front of. Um, so that's how I'll, I'll try to keep it in perspective for, for the guys all year long. How helpful is it having that blueprint that you had in 09 mm -hmm. to apply it now? Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to conference you say, hey, you right. to Oh, it's, it's incredibly helpful from the, uh, from the standpoint, and this, this might sound almost simple, but just from the standpoint of uh, when I meet with them Friday in this room before we leave, covering everything from uh, which bus you go out and sit on and who your roommate is at the hotel, and what we have for meals at the hotel. And we'll have these little laminated itinerary cards. See, on the front, it'll have Friday. On the back, it'll have Saturday. So having gone through that with a brand new team in 2009, we'll do everything again that same way. And I know I'm joking about it, but it's, it's so imperative to try to keep the mindset of the players, keep them as much at ease as possible. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep telling them I want them to have fun on this trip. The last thing I'll say to them before we take the field Saturday night is to have fun. So as much as we can plan ahead, that'll help. And that's where that experience from 09 really helps. So I'll, I'll never forget that when the plane took off and we were heading down the runway here in Norfolk, headed for Jacksonville, and you know every kid in the back put their arms up like they were on a roller coaster. And I said, turned over to the president and said, OK, I'm good now. I know we'll be fine. So I'll try to keep that same loose mindset and mentality uh, for this one. Good yes, sir. Special teams. You lose, uh, you know, your four-year All-American at punting. Mm -hmm. How's that going this this year so far? You got two punters. Yeah, it's been a it's, it's been a competition still going on right now between uh, between Jake Walsh and, and Joe Polisic. Um, you know, that's one area where we're we're going to have to work hard at. Uh, one advantage we have, Rick, is we've you know in the past uh, we've also used the quarterback and ability to punt some on fourth down, to, depending on down and distance and field position, but. Um, I suspect that'll that'll play out uh, throughout the week, and and we may have one, we may have two going into this first game. I have one little side note. Uh, we had 
you have to get a touchdown to your son in the Maury game. Uh, yes. How do you how do you help him out in his high school career? I mean, he's a receiver. I'm like, wait a minute, he's not a quarterback like dad. Mm -hmm. And how do you correlate that with trying to balance that with possibly mm -hmm. seeing his games as and your primary job as a head yeah. coach? That is a, a balancing act starting this week with my, my good friend Ted Alexander and, and Chuck Gray over here sitting over here. We've got our first radio show Wednesday night at Wild Wing Cafe. Shout out to that one. Then Thursday night, Dad gets to go to the Maury Grassfield game. Then Friday, Dad gets to go on a trip and head to East Carolina. So it's a, it's a balancing act. Thank, thank goodness for Mom is the, is the number one thing that I can say there. Follow up. Sure. Give him much advice to you, or does he mm -hmm. come to you? How does that work? Mm -hmm. I try to um, allow for you know his coaches to, to spend the time coaching him. Uh, he does come to dad occasionally, ask a couple questions about a few things here and there. Um, but I try more to be the you know the proud dad that's sitting up in the stands and watching and try to keep my suggestions and my advice to myself. <laughs> it seems to make for a better situation all around. <laughs> Yes, sir, Mr. Minium. Can you talk a little bit about Shane Carden and some of the problems mm -hmm. he presents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the interesting thing, Harry, with Shane is I, I look back to his start last year. You know, he, he didn't go into the season as a starting quarterback. Uh, and he came in, played 11 games, had tremendous stats. You know, he threw for nearly 300 yards a game, protected the ball. When you look and see 23 touchdowns, only 10 interceptions and completing 66% of his passes. Uh, that's really impressive. And it's not unlike how, how Taylor came into the season in 2011. You know, he came in during the season. So Shane's had that same experience. He and Taylor have a lot of parallels. Uh, what he does really well, Harry, is he's, he's got a really good ability uh, to move in the pocket. His timing is just outstanding, how quickly the ball comes out of his hands. Um, he's a hard guy to get to. Now, I think some of his stats were a little skewed last year because, um, I mean, nobody can block South Carolina. Uh, most people have a really hard time blocking North Carolina. So there were, there were a couple games where he got into uh, that skewed the stats a little bit. But uh, his ability to get rid of the ball quickly uh, is, is a major concern. I mean, in mm -hmm. camp, now that camp's broken and you're into game preparation and everything, mm -hmm. um, is there anything that really stood out, surprised you this camp, either collectively or certain mm -hmm. individuals? Yeah, pleasantly surprised by uh, the number of, of freshmen uh, that, that really jumped out. Um, right now, Dave, for example, to look and see, you know, Melvin Vaughn from Oscar Smith is a starting wide receiver. And you're talking about a team that led the nation last year in, in passing yards at FCS that had um, had eight receivers back with experience, yet he's one of the top four right now. So that, that was a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, Richie Staten, you know, middle linebacker from Phoebus High School. Right now he's listed as a starting middle linebacker going into Saturday night. So those two really, really jump off the depth chart at you when you look and say, here's two true freshmen. Um, both of them arrived here in July for summer school. And within two months, a two-month period, they've gone from, you know, are these guys going to play? Are they going to redshirt? To they're starting. And they're starting Saturday night. So those would be the two biggest examples. Now, I, I could go down through that list of 34 <laughs> that are brand new. There's a lot of really good examples on the page that jump out to me. I look, for example, at, uh, at defensive end Terrell Reed, you know, who's starting um, Saturday night, Terrell was a linebacker last year, redshirt, and he's grown into that position. Uh, just had a, a really good camp. Uh, Chris Smith, junior college nose guard. You know that was as 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 much as those freshmen surprised me. Um, I, I didn't see this one coming in a good way. I mean, this is a guy who's you know he's he's all of six one. He's three hundred twenty pounds, and he's going to have the ability to to help us inside. Uh, in the run game with his physical presence. And, and that allowed us to move Nate Barnes from the nose guard to his more natural uh, tackle position. You know, we'll put him more in a shade on a guard uh, and put Chris Smith more, more in there on the center. Uh, where, where both of those guys will be a little bit better uh, in that situation. Been really pleased with what Paul Morant's done. I mean, Paul had to go from playing safety on a hash to we basically put him up at an outside linebacker. I mean, if you look at us now, you'd see Paul Morant. You'd say, for all intent and purposes, we're a, 
we're, we're a nickel package team. You know, Paul's playing outside linebacker, and he's had he's had an excellent camp. You know, he took more snaps than anybody through camp in our team period on defense, and I really feel like Paul's uh, made some tremendous improvements. Uh, Javon Neal, another junior college guy who got here in January um, out of Texas, you know, he's starting at one corner right now. You know, that was one that, you know, you hope those things are going to happen. You hope guys are going to come in and compete. Uh, but he did that, and that, that adds more depth for us um, in that back end position. Now, offensively, I mentioned Melvin Vaughn. Well, we, we returned nine starters. So, you know, I would expect those nine guys uh, to be in the starting lineup. As of right now, all nine of those returning guys uh, are still in the lineup right now. Those guys that have come back from four of the offensive linemen, the quarterback, three of the wideouts, and, and the tailback. But we've also seen some really good things out of guys like Cam Boyd, Gerard Johnson. Those guys are going to play at running back. Uh, those two guys made a really, really strong impression uh, coming in. Gerard Shiloh, Shiloh is another tight end type. You know, he's like Melvin Vaughn. He's a little bigger body. So when we play some tight end sets Saturday night, either Melvin Vaughn could be at tight end or Shiloh could be at tight end. You know, those two guys could be lined up next to the tackle. If we feel like we need a little more in the run game, uh, if we feel like we need that protection, uh, to try to help help the quarterback situation out a little bit. So all those guys right there I just mentioned, really strong impression. And uh, again, half this team's brand new. So half of these guys are they're going to get their first snap Saturday night. How many do you think can play out of the seven? How many do I think will play? Uh, I really couldn't give you a you know, concrete number. I mean, I've told all of them, Ted. I've told all 70. Uh, that are going that you know there are no red shirts at this point you know everybody be ready because everybody could be in the game uh, at some point you know whether it be a, a special teams rep or, or defense or offense you know they all could be going so from from your standpoint be ready you, you could be calling out <laughs> you could be saying a lot of new names up there <laughs> Good questions all. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, 12th Monarchs. We'll see you at East Carolina Saturday night.